Neighbors? I have an announcement for you. I have never seen such a collection of dirty windows. Now, I want to see all of you out there on the fire escapes with your Mr. Clean bottles, and let's snap it up! Murray, do you have to shout like that every morning? Clears my head. Say, Murray, were you planning maybe today to look for a job? The what? Look for a job, Murray. <sighs> Murray. Murray, what'd you get me down here for? I mean, I, Nick, I just... what time is it? Well, it's about 7.20. Look, Murray, now I have to... <sighs> Nick, in a moment, you're going to see a horrible thing. What's that? People going to work. Junk man, Ferruccio here is a dealer in obsolete structures. Uh, you still getting a buck for this? Half a buck. Ferruccio, two bits. Deal. Oh, Murray, not another eagle. Nick, you can't have too many eagles. Hey, wait a minute. Why did you follow me down here? Why aren't you in school today? Well, it's a holiday. Yeah, it's Irving R. Feldman's birthday, like you said. No, Irving R. Feldman's birthday is my own personal national holiday. I did not open it up for the public. He is proprietor of perhaps the most distinguished kosher delicatessen in our neighborhood, and as such, I hold the day of his birth in reverence. Well, you said you weren't going to look for work today because it was Irving R. Feldman's birthday. So I figured I'd celebrate, too, a little. <laughs> Don't kid me, Nick. Yeah, I thought you liked that damn genius school. Well, I figured I'd better stick with you today. Something I gotta discuss. See, uh, because it's this special school for big brains, they watch you and take notes and make reports, and they smile at you a lot. Murray, they're very nervous there. 
Then there was this composition I wrote in creative writing about the advantages of unemployment insurance. Why did you write about that? It's on my mind. And once they got my record out, they started a notice what they call significant data. Turns out they've been keeping this file on me for a long time. Checking with that child welfare place. Same place you got those letters from. I never answer letters from large organizations. Well, anyway, when they come over there, I just thought we could, uh... Wait a minute. When who comes over where? Our apartment. This child welfare crowd, they want to take a look at our environment there. Nick, why didn't you tell me about this before? Well, you know, the past couple of nights, we couldn't get together. That was unavoidable. You know, when I have a lot of work, you stay up at Mrs. Myers. Murray, your work forgot her gloves last night. Well, anyway, for these child welfare guys, I figure we better set up some kind of a story this morning before they get there. You know, you make it sound like a vice raid. Well, I mean, for one thing, Murray, you don't even have a job right now. Hey, have you ever been to the top of the Empire State Building? Four times with you in November. Oh, really? Have you ever been to the Statue of Liberty? No, Murray, I... Ah, today is Irving R. Feldman's birthday. We shall go to the top of the Statue of Liberty and watch the Queen Elizabeth come in, full of all those tired, poor, huddled masses yearning to breathe free. Murray, will you listen to me? We have to... Couldn't I just read you from the Times again, like last week? Oh, okay. Read me from the paper. Hey, Murray, this paper is three days old. So, what do you want me to do, bury it? Is it starting to rot or something? Come on, read me from the paper. Yeah, but most of these jobs, somebody must have taken them. Well, I'll go get a newer paper. No, we do not need a newer paper. All the really important jobs stay forever. Now, uh, start on the first page of Help Wanted Mail and read me from the paper. Okay. Exec assist, ex opti, $90 to top sell. What's that? Executive assistant, excellent opportunity, nothing. Keep reading. Hey, here's a perfect one. It says writer one. Writer, editor, industrial periodicals, to write handbooks, reports, and promotion on electronic equipment. Say, what you got there, kid? The want ads or the obituaries? <laughs> okay, kid, read me some more want ads. concentrate on being a child because I find your imitation of an adult hopelessly inadequate. Well, you want to be your own boss, Murray, but the trouble with that is you don't pay yourself anything. <laughs> you don't pay yourself anything. Hey, that's a good line. I gotta remember that. Have you ever considered being the first 12-year-old boy in space? Murray, I am upset. Now, for me as an actual child, the way you live in this house and we live is a dangerous thing for my later life when I become an actual person. Now, an unemployed person like you are for so many months is bad for you as the person involved, and it's definitely bad for me, who we live in the same house where the rent isn't paid up for months sometimes. And I wish you'd get a job, Murray. Please. You're absolutely right. What's wrong, Murray? I don't know, Nick. 
Maria, you all right? Hey, I enjoyed the Statue of Liberty a lot. Yeah, it was great. I'm, I'm glad we went. <laughs> yeah, it is a great view, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Otto. Otto. We have reached at last the mainland, and we must now get the rocket plans from Agent X-22. Shh, French, you fool. He is being absurd. It is essential we are not absurd. Hey, is you really secret spy X-12? I wouldn't tell you. And why not? Because it's a secret, you <laughs> fool. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, listen, I'll tell you something. You know those poison capsules they give us to take when we get captured? Yeah. But they gotta know that they're giving them to us now, Otto. What's that? They're putting them in the cracker jacks. That's, that's just craziness. It's silly thing, what you said. That's silly. That's silly. That's a silly thing. They're putting them in there. Oh, in a second. This is ridiculous. I heard them put the prize in the package. What the... <laughs> Excuse me. Are you Mr. Burns? Only for a couple more seconds, buddy. They poisoned my Cracker Jack. Yes, I see. Uh, you are Murray N. Burns? Oh, excuse me. How are you? How do you do, Mr. Burns? Mm. I am Mr. Amundsen, and uh, this is Miss Markowitz. Uh, Miss Markowitz and I are a social service unit from the Child Welfare Board. Uh, we have been asked by the Bureau to... Oh, and this must be young Nicholas. <laughs> Hello. Mr. Burns, we, uh, Miss Markowitz and I, have been asked by the BCW to investigate and examine certain pupils of the Revere School. There is a... Uh, may we, uh, see you for a moment? Oh, certainly. Uh, there is certain information which the school and the uh, city would like to have uh, regarding young Nicholas. Uh, here, won't you sit down? I'll just get rid of these things. I, I'd like to explain uh, just why we're here, Mr. Burns. Well, say would anybody like some coffee? Oh, well, thank you, Nicholas. Uh, Miss Markowitz? Yes, thank you. Oh. Watch it. It might be best, Mr. Burns, for the child. If perhaps you were to send him downstairs to play or something while we have our discussion. Yes, it would be more advisable, Mr. Burns, if the child were not present. Uh, since Miss Markowitz, who will be discussing the psychological area, uh, that is, we will be discussing certain matters. Are you going to talk dirty? <laughs> I appreciate the uh, informality with which you approach this meeting, Mr. Burns. Uh, however, due to the fact that you have chosen not to answer our letters and several of our phone calls... Miss Markowitz, uh, uh, may I know your first name? It's Sandra. And you are the psychologist part of the team, Sandy? That's right, Mr. Burns. And you, sir, I take it, are the brawn of the outfit. Uh, perhaps I, I should explain, Mr. Burns, that the social service teams which serve the Revere School are a carefully planned balance of social caseworkers, such as myself, and, uh, oh, thank you, Nicholas, and a psychological social worker, such as Miss Markowitz, or actually, uh, Dr. Markowitz. Together, we form a rather... Is the coffee any good? Oh, yes, uh, very good. Thank you, Nicholas. Very nice, Nicholas. Nicholas, are you drinking coffee? Don't you think it would be better? No, it's milk. I like to drink it from a cup. Now, aren't you ashamed of yourself? Mr. Burns, Mr. Amundsen and I have several cases to examine today, and we would appreciate a certain amount of cooperation. East Bronx, Marshallou Parkway. And a couple of years in maybe Massachusetts. No! Oh, oh excuse me. Uh, Nick and I are merely testing our sense of voice and accent. 
Nick insists he is better at this than I am. Actually, I took my graduate work with a professor, a man with a very strong New England accent who could very well have influenced my speech. Nick is quite right. Well, thank you, lady. You certainly have a fine ear for sound, Nick. Do you and your uncle play many of these sorts of games together? Well, yes, we play many wholesome and constructive type games together. You're a big phony, Nick. This lady is here for the facts. Uh, quite so, Mr. Burns. We wish also to investigate those intangibles. Those... Jersey City. Oh, maybe Newark, a little bit of Chicago. Aha, uh -huh, I think you hit it, Nick. Well, that's really quite remarkable. Albert, Mr. Amundsen is from New Jersey. He went to the University of Chicago. Uh, Sandra, this is really quite beside the point. Albert, I think it's really quite remarkable. The boys uh, Suppose are... I just plunge right in here with uh, several of the facts required. Well, the honeydew melons in season the gamut, they're not really ripe, so I figured that the candle off. I'm sorry, I didn't know you had company. See you, Nick. Chin, Lori. There's somebody else living here with you? No, that's just my brother, Arnold. He brings fruit every morning on his way to the office. He's a fruit nut. Oh, yes, I see in our files that uh, your brother acts as your agent. Uh, our research team spoke to him, I believe. Say, do you really do a lot of that stuff? Calling people, going into my personal You've refused for quite some time, Mr. Burns, to answer any of our regular inquiries. We understand that you have been unemployed at this point for nearly five months. Well, he has an excellent that... opti to be an exec assist. And that uh, previous to this, you were the chief writer for the Chuckles the Chipmunk show. Right, Albert. For three years, I wrote scripts for Leo Herman. Better known as Chuckles the Chipmunk, friend of the young'uns and seller of chuckle chips, the potato of chips your buddy Chuckles the Chipmunk chomps on and chuckles over. Uh, would you care to describe the circumstances under which you left the employ of the... I quit. You felt that this was not the work for you? No, I, I felt that I wasn't reaching all the boys and girls out there in television land. Actually, it was not so much I wasn't reaching the boys and girls, but the boys and girls were starting to reach me. Six months ago, a perfectly adult bartender asked me if I'd like an onion in my martini, and I said, gosh and gollies, you betcha. Well, I uh, knew it was time to quit. Uh, may I ask if this is a pattern? That is, in the past, has there been much shifting of position? No, I uh, always take an onion in my martini. This is a constant... Mr. Burns, uh, perhaps you're not aware of, of just how serious your situation is. The circumstances of the child's environment, the danger... Our investigation, of, uh, uh, Mr. Burns, uh, is the uh, result and of what the Bureau considers to be almost an emergency case. Yeah, but he just likes to kid around, lady. Really, we've got a great environment here. Oh, relax, kid. Look, people, I am sorry. Uh, let's get on with the questions. Nick, suppose that you and I have uh, a little chat right here. Oh, fine. I was going to suggest that myself. <clears throat> well, I'm sure there are times when the fun stops and you have nice talks. And your uncle teaches you things? Oh, I can do a great Peter Lorre imitation. Yeah. Murray taught me. Uh, Nikki, what Miss Markowitz means... You can't hang ...is me. that uh, you and your uncle... I didn't do it, uh, I must some... tell you. No, uh, Nikki... That's not my knife! That's not what it we meant, It was all Nikki. a mistake! Nick... I'm innocent! No. I'm innocent! Nicholas! I... That happens to be a very good imitation. Well, perhaps, but we're trying to establish... Can you imitate Peter Lorre? Well, well I can also do a pretty good James Cagney. I mean, it's it's not fantastic like my Peter Lorre. Now, Lord, Nicholas, but it's pretty please good and I... try and pay attention. Now, if I may proceed. Albert, if you'll just let me handle this area. All right, Nick. Let's talk about games, okay? Okay. Now. Do you have any favorite games or toys that you'd like to show me? Some plaything that's just the most favorite one of all? Oh, there's bubbles. I don't think you'd be interested in seeing bubbles. Sorry. 
see, uh, Bubbles is what you'd call an electric statue. It's got an electric battery timer in there that makes it go on and off like that. Yeah, is this your favorite toy, Nick? Well, after a while, it gets pretty boring. Uh, tell me, Nick, do you like best the fact that the chest of the lady lights up? Well, you've got to admit, you don't see boobies like that every day. Anybody want any toast or orange juice or anything? Say, would you want to see the effect when the lights are out? Or when the room is dark? Tell me, Nick, is that what you like best about it? The fact that you can be alone in the dark with it? Well, I don't know, but in the dark, they really knock your eye out. Uh, perhaps don't you think we ought to uh, turn off... Uh... Nick, does Bubbles, does she in any way, does her face remind you at all of... Oh, let me see, your mother, for, for example. You know, it's just a doll. It's not a statue of anybody I know. I got it in a store downtown. Her, her chest, is that something? Well, it's something all right, isn't it? Uh, when you think about your mother... Well, I don't think about her too much. But when you do think about her, do you remember her face best or her hands? Oh, or... oh, I remember she has a terrific laugh. See, it's the kind of laugh that when she laughs, it makes you laugh, too. Of course, she overdoes that a lot. But I mean, physically, when you think of her, oh. do you... Uh, well, when you see Bubbles there, and Bubbles goes on and off like that... Sandra, his mother's chest did not light up. Mark that down in the file, Albert. Uh, Nikki, I wonder if you would uh, turn those off. I mean, her off. Uh, see, but... mainly I like to read books that are healthy, constructive, and extremely educational for a person. Uh, don't push it, Nick. Uh, he has no unusual fixation, Sandy. I mean, uh, he's no more abnormally interested in your bus than Mr. Amundsen is. Mr. Burns, it is not necessary to make that... Of comment. course, I might be wrong about that. Our interest in that doll. Say, is... you really are interested in that doll, Albert. Our our interest oh, in the well, doll. Oh, well, I I sold it with two dollars. That's fifty cents less than I paid for it. <laughs> <laughs> Sandra, I fail to see what's so amusing. Uh, I'm sorry, Albert. Well, it was just funny. <laughs> Suppose I pursue then the psychological part of this examination. Yeah, really, Albert, I really do feel that it would be better if I were to... Look, Albert, the lady was just laughing because something funny happened. That's the best thing to do under the circumstances. Mr. Burns. Say, how would you all like to go to the Statue of Liberty? Now, I have it on good authority from the weather lady that today is a beautiful day. Mr. Burns, now this interview uh, has... Reached I, I'm going to get my educational I, books now. I, I left them out on the Mr. street. Mr. Burns, this interview has reached Mr. a point. Burns. Now, damn it, Sandra, don't interrupt me. For goodness sakes, Albert. Uh, Sandra, Please. perhaps we... Uh, uh, would you excuse us for a moment, Mr. Burns? I'd like to have a short conference with Sandra. Yeah. Uh, 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 Dr. Markowitz. For a moment, please. What are you doing? Have we lost all control? Are you seriously talking to me about control? Now, 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 dear, I told you. I told you and I told Dr. Malco it is much too soon for you to be going out on cases. Now, you need another year in the office. Behind the lines, I told you both, you simply are not ready. Albert, you hardly let me get started. See, so, I was attempting to deal on the basis of the whole child. Three months out of grad school, and you want to go right into the front lines. Really? You get too involved, Sandra. Each case, you get much too emotionally involved. Now, we are scientists, dear. You seem to lose sight of that fact. Albert, this is no way to... To deal with this man. Oh, that's problem. fine. That's fine. How are we doing? You know, personally, I don't think you're going to solve your problems with each other. But I'm glad you came to me because I think I can help you. Al, uh, Sandy is not going to respect you because you threaten her. No, respect will have to come gradually, naturally, a uh, maturing process. Mr. Burns, the Child Welfare Board is thoroughly aware that Nicholas is not legally adopted. Consequently, they have, I assure you... Now, you don't assure me of anything, buddy. You make me damn nervous. 
Mr. Burns, according to the BCW, the child's continuance in your home is in serious and immediate doubt. Burns, aren't you at all willing to give some evidence in your favor for our report? Some evidence to support your competency as a guardian? All right, Albert. Look, folks, uh, uh, what, what's all the trouble? Uh, Neck is my nephew. He's uh, staying with me for a while. He's visiting. How long has he been here? Seven years. Nicholas's father. Where is he? Well, that's uh, not a where question. That's a who question. Nick Nicholas's mother, she is still alive. Ah, my sister is unquestionably alive. But her responsibility to the child. Well, now, for five years, she did everything she could for the child but get married. Now, that's not easy to understand since she used to get married to everybody. You might call Nick a bastard. Or a little bastard, depending upon how whimsical you feel at the time. I tell you, folks, I got a real social worker's paradise here. Well, uh, my sister Elaine arrived here one day with uh, two suitcases, a hat box, a blue parakeet, a dead goldfish, and a five-year-old child. A few days later, she went downstairs to buy a pack of uh, filter-tipped cigarettes. Six years later, she returned for the suitcases and the hat box. Now, the parakeet I'd given away, the goldfish I had long since flushed down the toilet, and the five-year-old child had, with very little effort, become six years older. When Elaine returned for her luggage, I uh, reminded her of the child and the pack of filter-tip cigarettes. And then, I don't know, I slapped my sister. Sister cried at some length and then proceeded calmly, briefly, to explain to me her well-practiced theory on the meaning of life, a philosophy falling somewhere to the left of whoopee. Well, that was almost a year ago, and I still got Nick. But, uh, I am sure she must have had some concern about Nicholas, uh, about the child. His name is not Nicholas, uh, or even Nick. You see, not having given him a last name, Elaine felt reticent about assigning him a first one. How did you communicate with the... I made a deal with him when he was six, up to which time he was known rather casually as Chubby, that he could use whatever name he wished for however long he wished until his 13th birthday, at which time he'd have to pick a name he liked permanently. Now he went through a long period of dogs' names when he was little, King and Rover having a real vogue there for a while. For three months, he referred to himself as Big Sam. Then there was Little Max, Snoopy, Chip, Rock, Rex, Mike, Marty, Lamont, Sh Chevrolet, Woodrow, Lefty, The Phantom, he received his library card last year in the name of Raphael Sabatini. His Cub Scout membership lists him as Dr. Morris Fishbein. Uh, Nick seems to be the one that'll stick, though. His mother, uh, where? Well, Elaine uh, communicates with my brother and myself almost entirely by rumor. Well, <laughs> I don't think I've left anything out. I was not aware that Nicholas was an O.W. child. O.W.? Out of wedlock. For a moment there, I thought you meant prisoner of war. I think it's that natural warmth of yours, Albert, that leads me to misunderstand. <laughs> yes, but uh, as concerns the child... Uh, where is the child? You prefer not having him here anyway, Albert. I'm perfectly aware, Sandra, of what I prefer and what I do not prefer. I don't care for that tone of voice at all, Albert. Sandra, I understand perfectly what has happened here. We have allowed this man to disturb us, and we have both gotten a bit upset. 
Now, I really do feel that it's time we got over to that family problem in Queens. It's there in your file, the Ledbetters, the introverted child. I've given an unreasonable amount of time to this case. Uh, this interview, I'm afraid, Mr. Burns, Albert, has reached a point. Albert, I personally feel that it would not be advisable to leave this particular case at this particular uh, Sandra, time. we have I done here this morning... I feel that we have not really oh. given Mr. Burns a chance. Sandra, it's time we left for Queens. Here's the Ledbetter file. I'm staying here. Sandra... I've decided to pursue this case. Have we lost all professional control? You just go yourself to the lead bellies. You go on to Queens, why don't you? May I just talk to you for a moment, please? Dear, what is this? What's happened to you today? What are you doing? I'm doing what I think is right. Now, I understand how you feel, Sandra, but there's nothing... Robert, are you really going to leave that man here like that? You're not going to try to help him or tell him about the board, separating him from the child? I mean, just so cold? Darling, of course I want to help, but let's not forget the child is the one who needs our protection. Oh, listen, you have, you have spent too much time in that graduate school and not enough time in the field. Now, you've got to learn your job. Don't give me any of that nonsense. This Albert. is not the time or the place for this. No, graduate school wouldn't have done you any harm, believe me. This is the most terrible thing. Do you know what you are, Albert? You're... I don't know, but I'll think of something. Mr. Burns. Mr. Burns, you can assume... Mr. Burns? Oh, uh, Mr. Burns. You can assume at this point that uh, Miss Markowitz is no longer involved with your case. Now, the uh, board will be informed uh, that she's no longer involved with this particular case. I mean, her continuing to discuss your case at this point is entirely unofficial. You can dismiss any uh, uh, conference which may resume when I leave. Uh, after I leave here. From your mind. And regardless of what you think of me... I think you're a dirty O.W. And do you know what you are? Maladjusted. Good afternoon, Mr. Burns. Good afternoon, Sandra. Mr. Burns? Mr. Burns, I must apologize to you. We, uh... We have put you... You have been put at a disadvantage this morning, Mr. Burns, because you've been involved in a personal problem that has, uh, nothing whatsoever to do with your, uh, particular case. It's entirely wrong for me to give you this impression of our, uh... Do you know what? What? I hate the Ledbetters! Well, I'm sure once I got to know them, I'd hate them too. Mr. Burns, you don't understand. Some of the cases I love and some of them I hate. And that's all wrong for my work, but I can't help it. I hate Raymond Ledbetter. And he's only nine years old. But some of them, some of them I like too much and I worry about them all day long. It is an obvious conflict against all professional standards. I didn't like Raymond Ledbetter, so I tried to understand him. And now that I understand him, I hate him. <laughs> uh, can I get you a cup of coffee? Albert is gone, and I just lost my job. I wrote out what my married name would be on a paper napkin last night after dinner. Mrs. Albert Amundsen, to see how it would look. We were going to be married 
was all planned. This is Albert Amundsen on a napkin. You have to understand, Albert. He's really a very nice person when he's not on cases. He's a very intelligent man. But last month, I fell asleep on him twice while he was talking to me. Do, do you have to sit there? Please go away. Why don't you go away? But I live here. I would like everybody to go away. Could I get you a pastrami sandwich? I don't even know you. I am crying right in front of you. Please go away. <laughs> now, you're really going to have to stop oh, crying because I'm going out of my mind here. I cry all the time, and I laugh in the wrong places in the movies. I am unsuited to my profession. I can't do anything right. Last, last night, I burned an entire chicken. And after seven years of school, I can't work, and I've got no place to go. An entire chicken. Oh, this is an awful day. What am I going to do? Oh, Miss Markowitz, this is a beautiful day. And I'll tell you why. Look, you're really a jolly old girl, and you are well rid of Albert. You have been given the rare opportunity of returning the unused portion and having your money refunded. But my work, what am I going to do? But you're a lover, Dr. Markowitz. Yet you are a lover of things and of people. So you took up work where you could get at as many of them as possible. And it just turned out there were too many of them and too much that moves you. But damn it, be glad it turned out you're not reasonable and sensible. Have all the gratitude you can that you're capable of embarrassment and joy and are a marathon crier. <laughs> there is a kind of relief that it's gone, the job and even Albert. But I know what it is. It's just irresponsible, that's all. And I don't have the vaguest idea who I am. It's just that there are all these Sandras running around who you've never met before. And it's uh, confusing at first, fantastic. But damn it, isn't it great to find out how many Sandras there are? It's like those little uh, cars in the circus, you know? This tiny red car comes out, hardly big enough for a midget, and it putters around, and suddenly its doors open, and out come a thousand clowns whooping and hollering and raising hell. <laughs> What's this? Uh, that is my undershirt. Now, uh, how's about going to the Empire State Building with me? I'll have that coffee now. Didn't answer my question. Would you like to visit the Empire State Building? No, not really. Well, how about the zoo? Not just now. Well, then will you marry me? What? Just a bit of shock treatment there. I have found, after long experience, it's the quickest way to get a woman's attention when her mind wanders. Always works. Mr. Burns. Uh, oh, no, no. Now that you've cried, you can't call me Mr. Burns. Same thing goes for laughing. <laughs> My name is Murray. Well, Murray, uh, <clears throat> to sort of return to reality for a moment. Uh, I'll only go as a tourist. Murray, the Child Welfare Board could really take Nick away. But there's some things that you could do about it to make your case a little stronger. Uh, Sandra, do you realize you are not wearing your shoes? Well, here I am with some of my favorite books. Uh, Fun in the Rain, The Young Railroader, Great Philosophers, Science for Youth, and a Spanish Dictionary. See, what I did was I left them out on the street when I was playing, and I Nick, thought... Nick, you just killed a whole month's allowance for nothing. Miss Markowitz isn't even on our case anymore. I shouldn't have left. You got angry and insulted everybody. Nothing to worry about. Well, four dollars right out the window. We're in real trouble now, right, lady? <laughs> Nick! Nick! We have a guest, a music lover. Let us play our song. <laughs> 
Come on, I'm sure it'll be requested. Murray, you know, we can't play songs in time like this. Come on, old man, where's your professional attitude? Murray, we cannot. This is no time to play songs. Please. Yes, sir. Murray, that's my no. baby. No, no, sir. I don't mean maybe. Yes, sir. That's my baby. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. We've decided no, sir. See, I figure I'll be staying up there tonight. Oh, by the way. Oh, by the way. When we meet, somebody will say, Yes, sir, that's my baby. No, sir, I don't need baby. Murray, who do you know who's leaving on that boat? Nobody. I don't jealous that way. Hey, I don't want to go. Charlie, baby, have a great trip. Bon voyage, Charlie. That's the way I have a good trip. Hey, you see, it's a great thing to do when you're about to start something new. You see a boat off. It gives you the genuine feeling of the beginning. Of the hey, bon voyage, Charlie, have a wonderful time. Bon voyage, Charlie, have a wonderful time. Bon voyage, Charlie. Oh, by the way, yes, by the way, when we meet, somebody will say, yes, sir, that's my baby, no, sir, I don't mean maybe, yes, sir, that's my baby, no. Right now, at this hour, it's just me and all that money. Right now, I'm all alone with two billion dollars in cash, checks, and securities. And me. I'm here, too. Yes, you are, lady. Yes, sir, we decided. No, sir. Yes, sir, that's my baby now. Oh, by the way, hey, by the way, when we meet, somebody will say, Yes, sir, that's my baby. No, sir. time of day or what season. I got a permanent fixture out there. It's twilight in February. Well, one of these mornings I'll wake up and that damn building will have fallen down into 7th Avenue so I can see the weather. Uh, using a machine to call up another machine. I do not enjoy the company of ghosts. 
Hello, weather lady. Well, I'm fine. And how's your nasal little self this morning? What's the weather? Oh, that high, huh? And the wind. Which way does the wind blow this morning? <laughs> Very good. All the way from Eastport to Block Island, huh? Hey, chance of showers? Say, what exactly does that mean? <laughs> there you go again. <laughs> you simply must learn not to repeat yourself. I keep telling you every morning that once is enough. Well, you'll never learn. Chance of showers. Hello, is this someone with good news or money? No, goodbye. This is your neighbor speaking. I'm sure I speak for all of us when I say that something must be done about your garbage cans in the alley here. It is definitely second-rate garbage. Now, by next week, I want to see a better class of garbage. More empty champagne bottles and caviar cans. I'm sure you're all behind me on this, so let's snap it up and get on the ball. Good morning. Good morning. How are you this morning? I am fine this morning. How are you? I am fine also. Do you have a bathrobe? Yes, I have a bathrobe. May I have your bathrobe, please? Well, I'll get you next. It'll fit you better. That sounds like a good idea. Hmm? There you go. Oh, thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's 11.15, and there is a chance of showers. Mm -hmm. uh, does the bathrobe fit? This bathrobe fits fine. Mm -hmm. Did you happen to see my clothes? Oh, uh, they're in the bathroom. Uh, shall I get them? No, thank you. Here are your clothes, also toothpaste and a toothbrush. Thank you. Morning, Murray. Good morning, Arnold. Say, Murray, Chuckles called me again yesterday, and I told him I would talk to you. That's all. Jimmy Sloan's in from the coast. He's putting a new panel show package together. You know, Arnold, you have many successful clients. Mm. With all these successful people around, where are all of our new young failures going to come from? Murray, those people I saw here yesterday, they were from the, from the welfare board. Is that right? I tried to warn you, didn't I try? Nothing to worry what about. You saying the, nothing to worry. The welfare people don't kid around, now do they? You know well, Arnold, that. I don't mind you coming here with fruit if you'll keep quiet, but you bring a word with every apple. Oh. Is Nick all right? Now, everything's okay. Bye, Murray. Bye, Arnold. You know, yesterday was the first time that I'd ever visited the Statue of Liberty. It's funny how you can live in a city for so long and not visit one of its most fascinating sights. Yes, that is funny. This coffee isn't bad for yesterday's coffee. Oh, oh! I think it's very good for yesterday's coffee. Mm. Good to the last drop. 
<laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> I have to go now. Oh? Yes. I have to be on my way. Uh, well, don't forget your file. Oh. Oh, my file. Bye. Goodbye. Yeah. You crazy nut, I was ready to kill you. What happened? You didn't say anything. Well, I didn't know what was going on. I was... Don't let me go. Oh, I'm just putting my coffee cup down here. Murray, I thought about it. And I probably love you. That's very romantic. I probably love you, too. We need color there, Marie. I hope you didn't mind about the screen around the bed. I think it gives such a nice separate bedroom effect to that part of the room. Oh, there's so many wonderful things you can do with a one-room apartment. Really, if you're willing to use your imagination. Uh oh. <laughs> do you have an extra key? A what? An extra key? Altman's has this terrific curtain sale. Oh, sure, a key. Uh... I thought I would go over and... Hey, you know what, Sandy? Uh, I don't seem to have one, uh, an extra key. <laughs> you better answer that, Murray. Oh, you uh, sure you don't prefer to... Uh... <gasps> no, I have no reason to hide from anybody. Aha! <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> you this morning, Mr. Burns. Oh, that was you. That was me. 
Miss Markowitz did not show up in Queens yesterday. So? Well, her parents are quite upset. I am quite upset. Where is she? She's hiding in the closet. Now, we're really all quite anxious to know where she is. Well, I'm not kidding, Albert. She's in the closet. She is in the closet. I wouldn't lie to you, Albert. Why is she in the closet? I don't know. Uh, she's got this thing about closet. Well, that's a very silly thing for her to be in, that closet. Well, don't knock it until you tried it. Now, uh, what else can I do for you, Albert? That's a difficult thing for me to believe. I mean that she's right there in the closet. You know, you are not a person, Mr. Burns. You are an experience. <laughs> Very nice, Albert. I'll have to remember that. Uh, actually, uh, Dr. Markowitz is not the reason for my visit today. Uh, I came here in an official capacity. Coffee? No, thank you. What's on your mind, Albert? Uh, Burns, late uh, yesterday afternoon, the Child Welfare Board made a decision on your case. Now, uh, the decision they've reached is based on three months of a thorough study. Our interview yesterday was only a small part of that quite thorough I want you to understand that I am not responsible personally for the decision they've reached. Now look, Albert. Months of research by the board and reports by the Revere School show a severe domestic instability, a libertine self-indulgence, a whole range of circumstances severely detrimental to the child's welfare. Hey, stop tap dancing a second, Albert. Now what's going on? Well, it is the board's decision that you were unfit to be the guardian of your nephew and that action be taken this Friday to remove him from this home and the deprivation you cause him. Who writes your material for you, Charles Dickens? The board is prepared to find a more stable, permanent home for your nephew, a family with whom he will live a more wholesome, normal life. Hey, listen, Albert, isn't there some kind of a hearing well, yes, you will have the opportunity Thursday to state your case to the board. Now, if there is some substantial change in your circumstances, if you can demonstrate that you are a responsible member of society... Well, this is Tuesday. What the hell am I supposed to do in the next two days when the Nobel Peace Prize? You were to be informed by the court, but... In view of the confusion which took place here yesterday, for which I consider myself responsible... You know, you speak like you write everything down before you say it. Well, yes, I do speak that way, Mr. Burns. I wish I spoke more spontaneously. I will always appear foolish in a conversation with a person of your imagination. Please, understand, there is no vengeance in my activities here. I love my work, Mr. Burns. Now, I believe that you are a danger to this child. Oh, now, I man. wish this were not true, because it is obvious you have considerable affection for your nephew. It shows in your face, this feeling. Well, I admire you for your warmth, Mr. Burns, and for the affection the child feels for you. I admire this because I am one for whom children do not easily feel affection. I am not one of the warm people.
But your feeling for the child does not mollify the genuinely dangerous emotional climate you have made for him. Now, I wish you could understand this. I would so much rather you understood, could really hear what I have to say. For yours is, I believe, a distorted picture of this world. Then why don't you send me to a foster home? I was right. You really can't listen to me. You're so sure of your sight. Your villains and heroes are all so terribly clear to you. And I am obviously one of the villains. Well, God save you from your vision, Mr. Burns. bet you don't believe I really do live above an abandoned Chinese restaurant, huh? Come on, I'll show it to you. All right. Oh, don't be nervous, lady. You're in an awkward stage. You're between closets. Murray, what Albert said about Nick. Now, look, Sandy, to tell you the truth, it's even uh, better for me if he goes. I mean, he's a middle-aged kid. You know, when I signed with the network that time, he sat up all night figuring out the fringe benefits and the pension plan? And he started to make lists this year. Lists of everything. Subway stops. Underwear. What he's going to do next week. Somebody doesn't want you to start making lists of what he's going to do next year and for the next 10 years. Hey, suppose they put him in with a whole family of list makers. No, no, I didn't spend six years with him, so he turned into a list maker. He'll learn to know everything before it happens. You learn how to plan. Learn how to be one of the nice dead people. Are you listening to me? Of course, Love Murray. I told you. Stamp your I... foot or mutter or something so I'll know you're there, will you? I want to be sure he knows when he's chickening out on himself. I want him to get to know the special thing he is or else he won't notice it when it starts to go. I want him to stay awake and know who the phonies are. I want him to know how to holler and put up an argument. I want a little guts to show before I can let him go. I want to be sure he sees all the wild possibilities. I want him to know it's worth all the trouble just to give the world a little goosing once you get the chance. I want him to know the sneaky, subtle, important reason he was born a human being and not a chair. Hey, I uh, brought you all the way down here. I didn't even show you the restaurant. Hey, the original Lum Farm's Oriental Paradise, rear door. <laughs> Shame they closed it. Something uh, to do with not being recognized by the United Nations. Sandy, I don't want him to go. I like having him around here. What'll I do, Sandy? Help me out. You see, I like when he reads me from the want ads. Don't worry, Murray. We'll do something. I know the board, their procedures, their things we can do. What I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll buy a new suit. First thing is to get a dignified suit. If you could just get some kind of job, Murray. Get your brother to help yeah, you. Yeah, right, right. Is it something you can get in a hurry? Yeah, one of those summer suits with the ready-made cuffs. No, a job. If you could just bring some proof of employment to the hearing, Murray. Show them how anxious you are to change. Show them you want to be reliable. Yeah! Reliable! Sandy, we will put on a great damn show for them. Spectacular reliability. A reliability parade. Bands, floats, banners, everything. <laughs> Murray. 
<laughs> oh. Well, Arnie comes in, tell him I need a job in a hurry, huh? Yeah, tell him to set up some appointments for lunch and straight through the afternoon if he can. Tell him the people he mentioned this morning, whoever can see me today right away, okay? Yeah, I'll call him back later. Hey, thanks, Marco. Please. Hey, Sandy, I'm gonna buy a new suit oh, now. Can I come with you? I'd love to watch you buy one. You better not. Sandy, I gotta move fast. You wait for me upstairs, huh? Here's a key for you. Thank you. Look, don't go away, huh? Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> Say good luck. Good luck. Ray, you are a magnificent human being. You are a magnificent human being. I thought you would. <laughs> And I'm sorry, Mom, but I'm calling you now to tell you some, some wonderful news. Oh, oh it's, a, it's a really basic relationship. I'm so, so in love with him, and, and I'm so very happy. Well, what do you mean? What do I mean, happy? show package. All ad lib. You'll be the permanent member on the panel. Every afternoon, just talk. No sweat. Great running bit for you on the show. What's that? Honesty. <sighs> Absolute honesty. The minute you come on, the first thing that comes to your cockamamie head. <laughs> Great TV. You'll be you, a big nut. Have you decided on your luncheon order, sir? Yes, I'll have a hamburger and a flashlight. Uh, 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 beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> oh, you'll be nutsy crazy. The audience will love you, Murray. A big, lovable eccentric. I'll put you on just the way you are. A natural phenomenon like the Grand Canyon. You'll have that crazy, nutsy face and that cockamamie talk. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> love. The audience will love you, Murray. Murray? Now, there's nothing for you to cry about. Guts. Guts. See, I told Arnie I wanted to see you because this, this new series is going to need a guts attitude. Courage kind of thing. I ought to run from a writer with your rap, but uh, I'm a gambler, Burns. Insecurity excited me. 
going for a big one this fall. The series will be really human, you know, kind of thing. Sort of a, well, of our time. Quality concepts, area of Kafka, symbolism, literate, Chekhovian sort of thing. We're calling it Homicide Squad. Now, I'm just spitballing here. You know, I got gut reaction, but, but, but each week we ought to be able to get in about 10 minutes of moral message, you know? Race relations thing, world peace thing, understanding brings love thing. Love brings understanding. Controversy a bit, you know, tough, you know, but uh, warm. you an offer and you walk out of the restaurant. Murray, Arnie, you have I got can't to get me. over this office. The 22nd floor. Oh, oh. oh, you can see everything. Oh, for God's sake, I don't believe it. What? It's King Kong. He's sitting on top of the Time Life building. Seems to be crying. <laughs> oh, ooh. Poor gorilla bastard. Somebody should have told him they don't uh, make these buildings the way they used to. Murray, Sloan didn't make you such a bad no, offer. Sloan is an idiot. I've got news for you, Cookie. With your situation this week, you're going to need idiots. Now, you do now, not Now, Arnie, you shouldn't to holler at to... me. I brought you a present. Murray. And that other uh, fella you sent me to with the TV series, a killer, Arnie, I saw notches on his attache case. Murray, you've got a rotten reputation. Even these guys weren't easy to grab. Why do you have to build your own personal blacklist? Why can't you just get blacklisted as a communist like everybody else? <laughs> what did you do to him? Oh, well, you just left him standing there. You just left him stand there. <laughs> Arnie, Arnie, it was beautiful. <laughs> oh, I would have loved to have seen that. It must have been great. <laughs> Wish to God I didn't enjoy you so much. I don't do you any damn good at all, too. <laughs> all right, come on, Murray. No more fun and games with Leo. Do you understand? He's absolutely all we have left before the hearing Thursday. <laughs> Don't worry, Arn. I figured I could always go back with Chuckles the Chipmunk. All right, Murray. Margot, get me Leo Herman on the speakerphone. Well, Leo won't be so bad for a while. Oh, Murray, now not for a while. You're going to have to stick with Chuckles. Now, my agency lawyer gave me all the facts. The most the board will allow you is a probationary year with Nick, a trial period. And the board's investigators are going to be checking up on you every week, regularly. Checking to see that you still have your job. Checking with Leo on your stability. Checking up on the improvements in your home environment. Sounds... sounds like a parole board. Yes, it certainly does. Kidderoonies. You take it from your old buddy, the old chipper monk chuckles. If your get up and go has got up and left, 
Just one ten cent bag of these crispy chuckle chips will give you that barrel of monkeys boat is never sunky feeling again. What do you say, kids? Yay! George, is that a yay? What kind of a yay is that? I asked for a yay, you give me a death rattle. Come on, look, are you gonna rehearse a yay? Rehearse a yay. Okay, let's have it again, kids. Yay! Death. We're dying. With that kind of a yay, the show is dying. That's why the show is dying. The kids don't have a yay attitude. Dead, dying, dead. Death. Dornell, dying, dead. It's a call for you, Mr. Herman. What is that? It's a telephone. Uh, Arnold Burns' office calling. Great. Wonderful, wonderful. Hello, Arnie. Here I am. Here he is. You got my voice coming out of that speakerphone in your office, right? Am I coming through? Am I coming through there? Clearly, Leo. Murray's here. Murray. Murray, the wonderful wild man. Hey, kidaroonies. Looks like your old Uncle Murray's coming back to write some of those wonderful script for us again. What do you say, kids? Yeah! Murray, what did you do? The job. The hearing, what? Did you do all this? Yeah. Do you like it? Well, I think it's superb. I mean, imagine my surprise when I saw it. Murray went downtown to see your Uncle Arnold. He's going to get a job. No kidding! <laughs> hey, that's terrific! That's just terrific! See, lady, he was developing into a bum. I mean, you don't want to see someone you like developing into a bum and doing nutty things. You know what he does? He hollers. Like we were on Park Avenue last Sunday. And it's very early in the morning. There's no one on the street, see? Just all these big, quiet apartment houses. And he hollers, rich people! I want to see you all out on the street for volleyball. Let's snap it up! And you know, sometimes if we were in a crowded elevator someplace, he'll turn to me and he'll say, Max, There'll be no more of this self-pity. Now you're 40, it's time you got used to being a midget. And everybody stares. He has a wonderful time. What are you gonna do with someone who hollers like that? You know, last week in Macy's he did that. <laughs> well, if you want to know the truth, lady, that was pretty funny. <laughs> I think you're a very nice lady. What do you think of me? Oh, I think you're very nice also. You know, a very nice quality you have is that you're a good listener, which is important to me because of how much I talk. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you are a laugher, aren't you, lady? <laughs> I guess so. <I'm> <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Would you like some fruit? We, we got lots of fruit. Oh, no, thank you, Nick. If you'd like to call your mother or someone, please feel free to use the telephone. Or my desk if you want to read a book or something. Or any, any of the chairs. Oh, I will. Thank you, Nick. Okay? Well, you gonna be staying around here for a while? I might. Yes, <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. Well, good luck to you, lady. Murray! What a nice 
nice suit you bought. Yeah. Oh. Mm, yeah. How is everything? Huh? Which job did you get? Uh, mm, uh, it's still going good, Gladys. Oh, marvelous. <laughs> uh, she's in her third month. Oh, pregnant. No, unemployment insurance. Oh, don't keep me in what? suspense. Which job did you get? I shall now leave you breathless with the strange and wondrous tale of this sturdy lad's adventures today in downtown Oz. Now, picture, if you will, me. I am walking on East 51st Street about an hour ago, practicing how to say I am sorry with a little style. Sorry for what? <laughs> oh, for anything. Just rehearsing. Uh, well, <clears throat> you know how it is when you're walking down the street talking to yourself, how suddenly you say something out loud. Hmm? So I said, I'm sorry. And this fella coming by, a complete stranger, he looks up a second and he says, that's all right, Mac, and he goes right on. <laughs> he automatically forgave me. I communicated. Now, 5 o'clock rush hour in midtown, you could say, sir, I believe your hair is on fire, and, and they wouldn't even hear you. So... I decided to test the whole thing out scientifically. I just stood there on the corner of 51st and Lex saying, I'm sorry to everybody that came by. I'm so sorry, sir. I'm terribly sorry, madam. Say there, miss. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, of course, I got a few funny looks, but I swear, Sandy, 75% of them forgave me. Something had happened to all of them for which they felt somebody should apologize. It was fabulous. I had tapped some vast reservoir. I just said, I'm sorry. And they were all so generous, so kind. Right. Yeah, Sandy, uh, I could run up on the roof right now and holler, I'm sorry. And a half a million people would holler back, that's OK, just see that you don't do it again. <laughs> Murray, you didn't take any of the jobs. Sandy, I, uh... I'm sorry. I'm very sorry. Well, damn it, lady, that was a, a beautiful apology. I mean, you gotta love a guy who can apologize so nice. I rehearsed it for over an hour. Oh, Sandy. That's the most you should expect from life. A really good apology for all the things you won't get. Um, Mary, I don't understand. What happens to Nick? What about the welfare board? Oh, Mary, if you didn't like the job, jobs your, your, your brother found for you, then take any job. Sandy, it isn't the job. You... Oh, I have had no effect on you at all. I've made no difference. Oh, Sandy, you are a cute, jolly lady. Oh, Sandy, hey. There's a great sailing tomorrow. The embarkation of the season. 53rd Street Dock at 1. The Montana Maru, Pearl of the Atlantic. Bound for Europe. Coram Shar. Sumatra and Beirut and points east. We'll stand on the dock and watch it go. Oh, gives you the genuine feeling of the beginning, I think. <laughs> hey, bon voyage, Charlie! Have a wonderful time! I can see why Nick liked it here. I would like it, too, if I was 12 years old. Hey, stick with me, Dr. Markowitz. You know, anything can happen above an abandoned Chinese restaurant. Oh, there are so many really attractive things that you can do with a one-room apartment if you're willing to use your imagination. Goodbye, Murray. You forgot your files? Hey, damn it! You forgot your files. I have been attacked by the Ladies' Home Journal. Place has an unusual quality now, a uh, kind of fun gothic. Where's my...
my ego. Well, what do we got here, Sunnybrook Farm? Everybody on stage for the wire number, please. Okay. Takes me an hour to get insulted. Now I'm insulted. You walked out of my office. That wasn't a nice thing to do to me, Murray. I mean, you come to my office today like George God. Everybody's supposed to come up and audition for a human being in front of you. I called Leo back. I apologized. I told him the phone broke down. I... Everything is gonna be fine. Arnie, you said I insulted you. Well, damn it, get angry. Come on, raise your voice, at least your eyebrows. Please, please have an argument with oh, me. Well, you're just, you're just getting excited, that's all. Now, look, I've got Leo to come over. He's going to see you tonight. Everything is going to turn out fine. You'll see. Now, honey, will you see, it's just fine. That? Will you forget now, it? Look, if, if you love Nick or whoever it is he's calling himself this week, you have got to take any kind of a stupid job to keep him. Now, I even thought maybe Shirley and me would take him, but, you know, our three kids, she'd go crazy. Oh, don't worry, Arn. This uh, welfare crowd, they know what they're doing. They'll put Nick with a good family. Yep. Murray, I finally figured out your problem. There is only one thing that really bothers you. Other people. The enemy. Watch out, Murray. They're everywhere. Go ahead, Arnold. Give me advice. At 30000 a year, you can afford it. Oh, I get it. If I'm so smart, why ain't I poor? Well, you better get a damn good act of your own, buddy, before you start giving mine the raspberry. What's this game you play gonna be like in ten years without youth? Murray, I can't watch this. You've got to shape up. Shape up? That's right. Shape up. Arnie, what the hell happened to you? You got soul. I don't know you anymore. Who is it? When you quit Harry the Fur King on 28th Street, remember? That's 20 years ago, Murray. Yeah. Harry said you weren't behaving maturely enough for a salesman. Your uh, clothes didn't match or something. So the next day, you dressed perfectly. Hamburg, gray suit, cufflinks, carrying a briefcase and a rolled umbrella. And you came into Harry's office on roller skates. Where'd they go, Arnie? What happened to your roller skates? Well, I don't do practical jokes anymore, if that's what you mean. Practical? That's right. A way to stay alive. Gee, if most things aren't funny, Arn, then they're only exactly what they are. Then it's just one long dental appointment, interrupted occasionally by something exciting, like waiting or falling asleep. What's the point if I leave things just the way I find them? Then I'm just adding to the noise. I'm just taking up some more room on the subway. Murray, the welfare board has these specifications. All oh, you have God. to do is to make up your Arnie, mind. Arnie, you don't Murray, understand I'm... anymore. You've got that wide stare that people stick in their eyes so nobody will know their head's asleep. <sighs> You've got to be a moaner, a shuffler. You want me to come sit and eat fruit with you and watch the clock run out. You start to drag and stumble under the rotten weight of all the people who should have been told off. All the things you should have said. All the specifications that aren't yours. You know, the only thing you've got left to reject is your food in a restaurant. If they do it wrong, you can send it back and make a big fuss with a waiter. 
Five months ago, I was on a subway on my way to work. I was sitting on the express, same as every morning, looking out the window, watching the local stops go by in the dark, with an empty head and my arms folded, not feeling great, not feeling rotten, just not feeling. And for a minute, I, I couldn't remember. I didn't know, unless I really concentrated, whether it was a Tuesday or a Thursday or... For a minute, it could have been any day, Arn. I gotta know what day it is. I gotta know what's the name of the game and what the rules are without anyone else telling me. You gotta own your own days and name them. Each one of them. Every one of them. Or else the years go right by and none of them belong to you. And that ain't just for weekends, kiddo. Well, here it is, the uh, day after Irving R. Feldman's birthday, and I never even congratulated him. Murray! Ooh. <laughs> well, what's so funny? I scared myself. <laughs> Murray, I've long been aware... I've long been aware that you don't respect me so much. No. I suppose there are a lot of brothers who don't get along, but in reference to us and considering the factors, it sounds like a contract, doesn't it? Unfortunately for you, Murray, you want to be a hero. If maybe a fella falls into the lake, you can jump in and save him. There's still that kind of stuff. Uh, who gets opportunities like that in uh, midtown Manhattan with all that traffic? I'm willing to deal with the available world. I don't choose to shake it up, but to live with it. There's the people who spill things, and there's the people who get spilled on, and I don't choose to notice the stains. I have a wife, and I have children, and business, like they say, is business. I'm not an exceptional man, so it's possible for me to stay with things the way they are. I'm lucky. I'm gifted. I have a talent for surrender. And I'm at peace. But you, oh, you're cursed. And I like you, Murray. So it makes me sad. You don't have the gift, and I can see the torture of it. All I can do is worry for you, but I will not worry for myself. You can't convince me that I'm one of the bad guys. I get up. I go, I lie a little, I pedal a little, I watch the rules, I talk the talk. We fellows have those offices high up there so that we can catch the wind and go with it however it blows. But, and I'm not going to apologize for it, I take pride. I am the best possible Arnold Burns. Give my regards to Irving R. Feldman, will you? Hey, Arnie. Murray, please allow me once to leave a room before you do. Hey, hey, Murray, watch it. Uh, yeah, it's OK now. Murray. Hi, Nick. You don't give it enough play, it goes into a dive. Let's go downstairs. Murray? I want to talk to you. This afternoon in school, I made a decision. Right in the middle of creative geography class, I decided that since you were getting a job today, then I made up my mind it was time for me also to finish a certain matter which I've been putting off. See, for the past couple of months, I've been considering different names, because in four weeks, I am going to be 13, and I've got to pick my permanent first name, like we said. Just go on calling yourself Nick. You've been using that one the longest. Well, Nick is a name for a short person. Since I'm a short person, I don't believe I should put a lot of attention on it. What do you mean? Where'd you get the idea you were short? 
from people who are taller than I am. That is ridiculous. Sure. Up there, it's ridiculous. Well, from down here where I am, it's not so ridiculous. You know, half the girls in my class are taller than me. Especially Susan Bookwalk. Nick, you happen to be a nice medium height for your age. So how is it everybody crouches over when I'm around? Because you're a kid. Look, you come from a fairly tall family. Now, the next couple of years, you're going to grow like crazy. Really, every day you're getting bigger. But so is Susan Bookwalter. So, for a couple of months, I've been considering various tall names. Then I thought about just picking any name, putting Captain in front of it, sort of jack it up a little. But I really didn't like that either. But then... Last week, I finally and really decided, and I took out a new library card to see how it looks. And today, I figured I'd make it definite and official. It's my library card. Well, no, that's the whole thing. It's mine. Well, it just says Murray Burns on it. Well, yeah, that's the name that I picked. So I took out a new card to see how it looks and make it official. Chuckle statue for you. Well, uh, thank you, Mr. Herman. Imagine how pleased I am to receive it. It's a very artistic statue and very good cardboard, too. And I got a chuckle hat for you, just like the old chipmunk wears. Thank you. Oh, oh. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> You're wearing the chuckles hat. You gotta say to chuckles hello. The what? Chip, chip, chipper monkey. Oh, yeah, sure. Chip, chip, chipper monkey. <laughs> May I know your first name? It's Nick most of the time. Most of the time. Look what I got here. Two big bags of chuckle chip potato chips. Huh? <laughs> Nicky, you want to put these crispy chips in a bowl or something for us? Oh. Yeah, and take your time, Nick. Because your uncle and me got some... We got some grown-up talking to do. Okay. And the kid hates me. I didn't go over very well with him. I pushed a little too hard. Nice kid, Murray. Yeah, how are your kids, Leo? Fine, fine, but I swear to God, even they don't like my show since you stopped writing it. My youngest one, my six-year-old. Ralphie. Ralphie. Watches the Funny Bunny show every morning now instead of me. Oh, have I been bombing out on the show every morning? You know what it feels like to bomb out in front of children? You flop out in front of kids, Murray? I swear to God, they're ready to kill you. Or else they stare at you. That's the worst. That hurt, innocent little stare like you just killed that pup or raped that turtle or something. Murray, have you back with me at the studio. See you at the show tomorrow. It's going to be beautiful. You're the best. I, I appreciate you feeling that way, Leo. This afternoon on the phone, you walked out on me, didn't you? Uh, yeah, Leo. Why? Why? I'm Why do you sorry. Do you no, I was only kidding. Don't tell no, me. I know. I... I make people nervous. Who can listen to me for 10 minutes, right? You see that? You see that? See how I kept touching my, my suit, my tie like that? I keep touching myself to make sure I'm still here. I get this feeling, maybe I vanished when I wasn't looking. No, I'm sure that you're here, Leo. See how he talks to me a little nasty? I like it. It's straight, it's real, I like it. You know what I got around me on the show? Finks, dwarfs, phonies, and frogs. No Murrays, the show is boring. Boring, boring. Boring, boredom, bore. Boring, boring. Boring, boring. Boring, boredom, bore. Murray? Boring, boredom, bore. Boring, boring, boring. <laughs> I believe that I left my files here. I came to get my files, 
May I have my files, please? Oh, excuse me. That chuckles a chipmunk. This is Minnie Mouse. Hiya, Minnie. You must be Mr. Herman. I must be. I must be him. Well, I'll be on my way. That's a very attractive girl, that Minnie. What does she do? Yeah, she's my decorator. She's done a wonderful job. The place is great, Murray. It's loose, it's open, it's free. I love it. A wonderful, crazy place. <laughs> My God. You must make out like mad in a place like this, huh? <laughs> How is it I never came here before? You were here last January, Leo. You worked with me for three years. I never saw your apartment. You were here last January, Leo. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wasn't I here recently? In the winter? Last January, I think. I remember I came here to get you back on the show and you wouldn't listen to me. It was a week after you quit me. You walked into the kitchen and started singing, Yes, sir, that's my baby, and I left. Feeling very foolish, like I had footprints on my face. You're, oh. you're a monkey. You're a monkey. <laughs> you're an old monkey, aren't you, huh? Walked in the kitchen and started singing, Yes, sir, that's my baby. <laughs> you know what I got from that experience? A rash. I broke out something terrible. <laughs> Minnie Mouse. Minnie Mouse! You told me her name was Minnie Mouse! <laughs> I swear to God, now I think my mission in life is to feed you straight lines. It's a kind of a fallout shelter. That's what you got here, Murr. Protection against the idiots in the atmosphere. It's free. It's free for your free. Free, free, free. Freedom free. Another year and I'll cut another year and I'll cut loose from the chipmunk. Chipmunk show. Blinds me, hugs me up, pinks, dwarfs, ponies, and frogs. Now the two of us, we gotta do something new, something wild. A new kind of kids show for adults, maybe. You told me the same thing three years ago, Leo. All right. What do you want from me? I'm a coward. Does everybody know that? Oh my God. Did you ever see anything so immodest? I bring a big statue of myself as a gift for a child, huh? The pure ego of it? I'm ashamed, Murray, please. Throw a sheet over it or something, will you, please? Good. <laughs> oh, gorgeous Kitarunis. Look at your poor chipmunk friend. He got his mouth stuck. Oh, no matter how hard I try, I can't get my mouth unstuck. But maybe if you chipper monks yell, be happy, chuckle, maybe then we'll get unstuck. <laughs> you, you're supposed to yell, be happy, chuckle. Oh, yeah, sure. Be happy, chuckles. <laughs> Why, you fixed me. <laughs> I'm all fixed. <laughs> yeah. Would you like your potato chips now, Mr. Herman? <laughs> That's a bit from tomorrow morning show. Yeah, you're going to know it before all the kids in the neighborhood. Thank you. That's one of the funny parts there, I couldn't move my mouth. Oh, oh, yeah? You think it was funny? Sure, that was pretty funny. Yeah. Don't you laugh or something when you see something funny? Oh, yeah, it just caught me by surprise is all. I didn't get a chance. Don't you want more potato chips, Mr. Herman? Another funny part was where I jumped up there with a smile there. At the end there was another one. See, then the finish on a bit. I got the smile, see? Now I'm all fixed, huh? Now I'm all fixed. <laughs> Yay! Oh, now it's stuck the other way. Well, gee, that's terrific, Mr. Herman. That's all you gotta do. Just get up there and do that, and they pay you and everything. You didn't laugh. I was waiting for the funny part. That was the funny part. You mean when you fell on the floor? Yeah, we're close back on the floor there. Well, you see, the thing is, I... Yeah, I know. You're waiting for the funny part. Well, yeah, you missed another funny part. Another one? I'm very sorry, Mr. Herman. I... Forget it. I happen to know that the bit is very funny. I can prove it to you. 
What does it say right there? Second line there. Frown bit. 85% of audience. Outright prolonged laughter on frown bit. That's an analysis report the agency did for me on Monday's preview audience. The routine I just did for you got outright prolonged laughter. 85%. Monday, 3 o'clock. You can try him on sad parts, Leo. He's very good on sad parts. As a matter of fact, there was a poignant type bit I did at the preview theater. 60% of audience noticeably moved. They left the theater? There he is. There's the old joker, right? Huh? Hurry the joker! Well, say, I can do some routines, too. Now, I can imitate the voice of Alexander Hamilton. Good. I do Alexander Hamilton. And Murray does a terrific Thomas Jefferson. We got the voices just right. Hello, Alex. How are you? Say hello, Tom. You know, you should have been in Congress today. Yeah. You really missed it. Oh, this is ridiculous. <laughs> You can't do an imitation of Alexander Hamilton. Nobody knows what he sounds like. <laughs> well, that's the funny part. You missed the funny part, Leo. I'm getting a terrible rash on my neck. I was working good in front of the kid. The routine I did for him was funny. I don't go over with these odd kids. Well, look, look at him. Here I am right in front of him in person, for God's sakes. He's staring at me. Oddness here, Murray. Oddness! Alexander Hamilton imitations, jaded jokes for old men. What you've done to the kid is a shame. It's a shame. It's a shame the way you brought the kid up here. Grotesque atmosphere. Unhealthy. Women in and out. Decorators. Yeah. Had he been brought up by a normal person, not in this madhouse. Hey, don't say that. It's a certain freakish kind of growing up. Freakish way of growing up. Hey, are you calling me a freak? You called me a freak, now you take back what you said. On June the 3rd, I'll be 42 years old. I'm standing here arguing with a 12-year-old kid. Nikki. Humor is a cloudy wonderland thing. But simple and clear as the blue, blue sky. All I want is your simple, honest child's opinion of my routine. But children are too honest to be wise. Well, my simple child reaction of what you did is that you were not funny. Funnier than you is even Stuart Schlossman, who was my friend and is 11 and puts walnuts in his mouth and makes noises. What's not funny is to call us names. And what is mostly not funny is how sad you are. And I'd feel sorry for you if it wasn't for how dull you are. And those are the worst tasting potato chips I've ever tasted. And that's my opinion from the blue, blue sky. <laughs> there he is. There's the old monkey. There's the old joker, right? You didn't want to come back to work for me. You got me up here to step on my face again. Uh, wait a minute, Leo. Yo. Yes, sir, that's my baby no shirt. That's the song. That's a goodbye song. That's I'm my baby no shirt. Hey, hey, Leo, you wait a minute. What's your nuts here? Yes, sir. Crazy. Now, look, wait a minute. Leo, I'm sorry. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Better cut that out. Come on, Murray. Can't you? We'll sing to him. He'll go away. No, 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 let him go away. He called his no, name. We got to be quiet for just a minute, please. Oh, Murray, on, let him go away, please. Crummy statue. Hey, Nick, come on, statue. head up. Nick. Please, he come can't on, push us it. around. Yes. Not you and me, Murray. We got to get rid of him. Uh, we got to, please. Please, we, we can't. Come. We can't. Oh, uh, kid, I'm sorry. Sorry, kid. I'm sorry. Look, uh, better go to your room. This is a one-room apartment. Okay, then go to your alcove. I hope you didn't misunderstand. You know, we were only kidding I myself, you. I got carried away there myself. Yeah, well, we all got a little excited, I guess. So, 
I'll see you at work in the morning, Leo. Great to have you back, fella. You both hate me. No, no, nobody hates you, Leo. I yelled at the kid. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to cause any upset. I don't get along too good with kids. Well, well don't worry about it. Why not come have a drink with me? I know, I know. Not, not tonight. Uh, some other night, huh, Leo? Yeah, look. After I leave, you horse around with the kid a little bit. <laughs> He'll feel better. Right, Leo. That bit I did from was funny, wasn't it, Murray? Yeah, Leo, I, I guess it was just a bad day for you. Psh, uh, bad day for the old chipmunk. You, uh, you don't want to leave that statue lying on the floor like that, huh, Murray? No, Leo. See you at the studio in the morning, you old monkey. <laughs> You're an old monkey, aren't you? Uh, I could use a pastrami sandwich right now, couldn't you? Uh, on rye with coleslaw and Russian dressing. Nick? The guy calls us names. The guy talks to us like that. Should have got rid of that moron. We could have fooled the welfare people or something. <sighs> could have moved to Mexico, New Jersey, or someplace. I hear the delicatessen in Mexico is terrible. Well, I'm going to call myself Theodore. OK. As long as you don't call yourself Beatrice. All right, fool around. Wait till you see a Theodore running around here. And just wait. Not a couple of seconds, he would have been out the door. Murray, why'd you let him push us around? Watch you go chicken on me, huh? Because your routines give me outright prolonged laughter, Theodore. Four ninety-five for a new tablecloth, and you leave it around like this. Perfectly new tablecloth, and already there's dust all over it. <sighs> you know. It is very interesting that I left my files here, that I forgot them. I mean, psychologically, if you want to analyze that. Of course, last month I left my handbag in the automat, and I have no idea what that means at all. <laughs> I think that the pattern of our relationship, if we examine it, is very intricate. The different areas of it, especially the whole goodbye area of it. Hello, Sandy. How are you? Hello, Murray. I called the weather lady before. She says it, it is a beautiful day. Say, lady, can I help with any of that? As a matter of fact, Nick. Nick, I do not think the effect, I mean, the overall design of this room is really helped by all these knickknacks. Mm. You mean the junk? Yes. 
Yeah, well, it, it's not good for the overall design. So, Nick, if you would just help me put the uh, junk into those cartons over there. Nick. Nick! Wilbur. Wilbur Malcolm Burns. <laughs> The entertainment committee was quite disappointed in the really poor turnout at this morning's community sing. I mean, where's all that old Camp Chickawatomy spirit? I'm sure I speak for all of us here when I say that I... Now, I'd like to say right now that... That... Campers? I can't think of anything to say.